Hi, I'm John Foro. Today, we've got a 2014 Ford Flex vehicle behind us. Now, there's nothing wrong with this particular vehicle, but I figure this is a great opportunity to share with you a tech tip on how Ford vehicles, the earlier ones, the latest and greatest ones that support are supported by FDRS, no longer support these three different types of codes. But for decades, Ford gave us three different types of diagnostic trouble codes. Much unlike all the other competitors that they had out there, these take and narrow down our diagnostic process for us. So when we pull up, once we actually married the car to the scan tool and got to the diagnostic trouble code screen, when we pull it up, we see our three types. Continuous memory diagnostic trouble codes, we have key on engine off diagnostic trouble codes, and also key on engine running diagnostic trouble codes. So each one of those codes give us some, some pretty good insight for diagnostics here. So for continuous memory diagnostic trouble codes, this is going to be an overall larger picture of things. So if I had a trouble code stored in one of the other two systems, whether it be key on engine off or key on engine running at some point, it would also still be stored in the continuous memory diagnostic trouble codes. If you want to, you could kind of look at that as a good starting point. That's how I like to look at it first. But I always go into the other two sections as well. Now, key on engine off codes, that's basically looking for hard opens or shorts. It's, it's going to give us a, a good insight as if maybe somebody took this car to a lube stop or something and they checked the air cleaner element and they had to unplug a, a idle air control um, temperature type of thing or something and that was left unplugged. That would be something that would be flagged right away. Or if there was some kind of dead short, maybe some wires melted on an exhaust manifold or something like that. But key on engine running, that is going to require the engine to be operated. So it's a much more precise way of finding a possible fault. So this takes into account all that enable criteria we've heard so much about through OBD2. It's gonna take into account stuff like the operating temperatures. It also will take into account the, the, the dynamic operation of these sensors. So something as simple as say a brake on off switch, it's going to want us to pump the brake pedal, stuff along those lines, and it's going to be a much closer knit way of actually diagnosing these types of codes. So I'm gonna real quick just go into continuous memory diagnostic trouble codes first. The key's already on. You can see there's no problem with this vehicle. It says that there's no DTC stored. So I'm gonna still go through the other two options here. I'm gonna go into key on engine off type of codes. Again, this is looking for some type of hard opens or shorts. And once I select that, you'll notice that it's going to it's going to start, you'll hear some stuff clicking, cooling fan motor kicks on. So this is, this is seeing some of the dynamic range of operations through some of these sensors that it's testing. I'm gonna go back again, it says no DTC stored. And for the last one, key on engine running, I'm gonna go inside the vehicle, I'm gonna start this vehicle up. Now you gotta remember that in this section, it's gonna require a little bit of user input from you as a technician. It's gonna require you to do some things that the car's computer can't do by itself. Stuff along the lines of stepping on the brake pedal, so the, the brake on off switch needs to cycle through and the computer needs to make sure that that's happening. Overdrive cancel switches, whatever you have to do to do that if the car even actually has overdrive, which most of the newer models do. And we're going to basically have my assistant inside the car start the vehicle up and we're going to select that test. And then I'm gonna select the button here and you'll hear the RPM start to rise. So it's given me a little bit of insight here that the vehicle has to be preliminary prep. So it's gotta be at an operating temperature, stuff along those lines. I'm gonna say, okay. You'll hear the RPM start to rise. And as soon as it rises, my assistant Tom is going to be doing all of those user inputs that we talked about. He's stepping on the brake pedal, he's turning the steering wheel back and forth, he's cycling the overdrive cancel switch, and the, the scan tool is going to be retrieving any type of faults it may find during this process. 
for you technicians, you'll know when the test is 100% complete because the headlights will actually flash on and off. So at this point, it's just going ahead and testing all of its inputs dynamically. And once it goes through the whole list of inputs, it will go ahead and flash the headlights and then we'll know that the test is actually complete at that time and any trouble codes that were stored will be pulled up. I want to make special note that if we did not properly prepare this car, we may get a false trouble code in this section. So we hear the idle RPMs coming down. We're waiting for the headlights to blink here. So if the vehicle wasn't at operating temperature or something along those lines, we may get a false trouble code for, say, an oxygen sensor. It's returned back to a state of idle here. We're still just waiting for it to do its final tests. The cooling fan is running on low speed right now. Cooling fan just shut off and it comes up and it's now complete with the tests here and it says that there's no diagnostic trouble codes and we saw the headlights just quickly flash there. So that tells us that we properly prepared the car we don't have any type of false codes being set. Again, if I did not have my assistant, say, step on the brake pedal, or if the vehicle wasn't at operating temperature, we would set some false trouble codes here. And then that could waste a lot of our diagnostic time. So make sure you understand the value of those three different types of tests, and more importantly, how to do them. Well, that brings us to the end of the four diagnostic trouble code tech tips here. Be sure to use the information we covered to get the most out of your launch scan tool.